as we uh, as we of course continue uh, to keep our eye on local uh, coverage uh, from our affiliate there in San Antonio KENS of an active shooter situation at Lackland Air Force Base in the city of San Antonio I now want to bring Matt Horace on with us a former ATF agent to discuss what exactly is now happening on uh, the base right. itself uh, Matt we appreciate the time we are hearing thus far authorities unclear as to how many shooters there may be involved in this situation what are they doing right now on as that Air Force Base to everything secure everything that we're able to get the information we're able to get right now. Hello? Again, Matt Horace, a former ATF agent, now joins us on the phone again. Uh, as we look at pictures of a still active shooter situation, Matt, at Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio, where authorities are confirming at least two deaths. Uh, they've also said they are still unclear how many shooters there are involved in this situation. What are they doing on that base right now? Well, good morning. They're trying to identify the scope of the problem. They have to stop the shooting and stop the violence. They have to identify uh, where people are sheltered in place, identify potential victims and potential victims of crime, and they got to secure that entire perimeter, the external perimeter and the internal perimeter. There are reports that two sirens were heard within the hour, a warning of an active shooter near uh, the building in question. How, uh, what sort of procedure or, or protocols would have been in place uh, with regard to uh, drills uh, that would have prepared them for a situation uh, like this? Well, you know, from a security perspective, a military base is a hard target. So they have procedures and policies in place to notify employees when there are inherent threats to include active shooters and other types of situations. So. Uh, the fact that these sirens went off lets us all know that they have their um, program together. It's been practiced. It's been rehearsed. And hopefully they'll be able to bring this to a uh, quick conclusion. We are hearing that there is a shelter in place, uh, not just inside the base itself, but uh, outside the perimeter. It does include, as we've uh, been hearing uh, on local coverage, three different schools, elementary schools. Uh, to, to the best of your knowledge, a again, as this, uh, as this uh, continues, how long might that shelter-in-place order remain? Well, it's going to remain until they've been able to uh, mitigate and stop the threat, number one, and to identify victims and make sure they account for people that are both supposed to be on base and people that are supposed to be outside of the base. It's going to be, it could be minutes, it could be hours, or it could be days. I do, I do want to now, uh, the AP is now reporting uh, that two, again, there are two confirmed uh, deaths uh, in this incident. It is an apparent murder-suicide. Certainly, authorities at this point would have identified, uh, would have identified the, the nature of the incident. If, in fact, it is a murder-suicide uh, and that perhaps there are then no, uh, there is not an active shooter on the base I itself, uh, what steps would authorities be taking having identified this as a murder-suicide? Well, you know, when you're doing investigations, you can't take anything for granted. So they still need to make sure that no one else was involved in this plot. And to, to the extent that someone could be, they want to make sure they identify that there are no other shooters or no other co-conspirators involved with this plot before they move in and start to declare the scene as safe and secure. Matt Horace, former ATF agent. Uh Joining us here again, as we can now tell you, it was a bit, it's been a developing situation in the last hour plus in San Antonio at Lackland Air Force Base. Reports of an active shooter situation. The Associated Press is now reporting that two have been killed in this incident in an apparent murder suicide. Again, we are waiting for information as local authorities have uh, the base on lockdown and the shelter in place around uh, the immediate surrounding area. It's an area that includes uh, three different schools, we are told, as that shelter-in-place warning does remain. Uh, again, uh, Matt, perhaps for those uh, just joining us, uh, it is an all-too-frequent occurrence uh, in this day and age. I do want to ask you again, the protocols in place for uh, reports of an active shooter on uh, military installations, reports that there were two sirens heard. What would have happened when those sirens went off? Well, people would have been alerted immediately that there was some sort of problem on the base. Uh, I'm not sure whether uh, the, they have different sirens to mean different things, but people would know immediately to shelter in place, to pay attention to their phones and text messages, and to, and to get out of the uh, line of fire, so to speak. So this is apparently exactly what happened. People are sheltering in place, and people on the base know to stay where they are and await for uh, further instructions. All right, Matt Horace, former ATF agent, we do appreciate the time. and. Uh... 
uh, please uh, stay with us again as we will be uh, looking to update this story as news becomes available. Again, uh, the situation as we know it at Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio. Reports came about an hour, just over an hour ago, uh, of a shooting, of an active shooter situation on the base. Two sirens uh, were sounded, alerting people on the base to that active shooter. Uh, and we can now confirm via the Associated Press that two have been confirmed killed in an apparent murder-suicide. We want to dip back in now uh, to local coverage uh, from our San Antonio affiliate, KENS. Audrey, can you hear us? We're live right now with Bear County Sheriff's Office spokesman James Keith. James, tell us a little bit about what is going on here at Lackland Air Force Base. Right now we do have an active shooter situation where we do have deputies inside the building. What we know at this point is at roughly 8.40 this morning, we received a call from Lackland Air Force Base requesting assistance for an active shooter. When our deputies arrived, they made entry into one of the buildings. They went through several rooms, several hallways, looking for a shooter, looking for victims. They went into a room. They found two bodies. Right now, we do believe that those two are victims of a murder-suicide. We are currently still inside the facility. Our deputies are looking for any other victims and any other possible shooters. However, we do feel like the situation is contained and everything is okay at this point. But this um, facility, tell us what this facility is and is it still on lockdown? I don't have specific information about what this facility is. It is inside the perimeter of Lackland Air Force Base and this entire base is on lockdown right now. And as far as, you know, families who are wondering what is going on with their loved ones, what would you say to them? We are asking everyone to just remain calm, trust that the situation is being handled. It does appear to be contained at this point. We don't believe that there is still an active shooter. So we just ask the public to remain calm and trust that we are going to make sure that anyone who may have been affected by this is accounted for. And as far as everyone inside of that facility, um, how are they doing? And the people who were shot, do you know um, their sex or uh, male, female? I don't have specifics that I'm able to release about the victims right now, but naturally everyone here is affected by this. It's a scary situation, and given the situations that have happened in the past that are similar to this, it puts everybody on edge. So right now, are authorities searching uh, that facility room by room? I know you mentioned that earlier. Our deputies have gone room by room to the rooms that are unlocked. We are still trying to get access into some of the rooms that are locked. Once that is done, we will be able to have a better idea of what this situation was. And can you tell me anything about the weapon that was used in this? I don't have that information. Okay. So um, after this, will Bear County Sheriff's Office continue in this investigation? Right now, we are preparing to hand over the investigation to the FBI. They are on scene right now. We're also working with military police. Okay. All right. Thank you, James. All right. You just heard from James Keith, the Bear County Sheriff's Office, who is assisting in this active shooter situation here at Lachlan Air Force Base. Just to confirm, we did hear James Keith uh, say that there is only one shooter involved in this. Is that correct? Well, they believe that it may have been a murder-suicide. They do have two people who were shot, um, but they do believe that that uh, threat has expired, but they are still on lockdown, searching room by room in this facility behind me. Audrey, I'm curious, during his uh, briefing with the press there just a few minutes ago, did, did he give any indication what would lead them to believe this was a murder-suicide? They did not. Earlier he said, um, you know, doors were locked, so they are going room by room, but they did say they found two people in the same vicinity a shot. And Audrey, we know uh, that the Lackland Air Force Base right now is on lockdown. We heard James Keith say that he believes the situation is contained, uh, that there is no more danger. Do we know when that lockdown may be lifted, especially that we know that there are three schools involved in uh, part of this lockdown right now? We do not know when it's been going to be lifted, but we do know they are asking for families to be patient with them as they go room to room in this facility and try to make sure there are no more victims in this active shooter situation. But right now they say the situation is under control. All right, Audrey, if you could, with, uh, with the uh, photographer that you have with you, if you could just pan the area and describe for us 
what you're seeing, literally. So we're seeing a facility that almost looks as if it's a dormitory, two buildings. We have tons of police and EMS units spread out. We have SAPD, we have sheriffs, we have Bear County Constable, as well as federal officials, the FBI is here, and of course, military officials who are all um, casing this scene, as well as blocking off this area, because like we said, it is still on lockdown. They are asking families to be patient with them as they go room to room searching if there are any other victims in this active shooter situation. And just to emphasize, uh, Audrey, Keith did say that they will hand over this investigation to the FBI at this point, correct? Yes, that Bear County Sheriff's spokesman did say that they will be handing that over to Air Force officials. All right, Audrey Castoreno uh, at Medina Base Road and Old Valley High Drive. Uh, thank you. We'll look forward to hearing more from you at noon. Again, we are uh, again this an active shooter situation. Uh, scenes from Lackland Air Force Base. That's in San Antonio, where reports uh, were uh, came. At roughly 8.45 a.m. there, local time, of an active shooter on the base, two sirens were sounded. There was a shelter-in-place order, uh, a lockdown, really, of the base and the surrounding uh, environs. We have now later learned uh, authorities are confirming that two have been killed. Uh, they believe in an apparent murder-suicide. As more news uh, becomes available, we will have it for you, so please stay with us here at CBSN uh, throughout the day for that. We can also tell you some breaking news from Brussels. Belgian authorities are confirming that several arrests have been made in relation to the Brussels terror attacks, of course, coming one day after the release of uh, CCTV footage that purported to show that man in the hat uh, that we saw in the uh, video of the day of the attacks at the Brussels airport uh, making his way about an hour or so in length back into the city proper. Uh, we want to bring in now our Elaine Cobb. She joins us. Oh, uh, okay. We'll have Elaine Cobb uh, join us uh, with the very latest there. But first, a quick break here at CBSN.